All right, let me do a quick cold start here. I'm gonna open up the garage door. This car's been sitting for like, I don't know, five weeks maybe. Um, I'm not gonna use the choke today just to see if it starts up without the choke, uh, just because it's so warm out, but let me see here. Little guy, <laughs> little guy just fired right up. She's cold blooded, but I uh, just wanted to show you the car here. We're gonna have a video up on the GoPro here in a minute, but figured I'd do the cold start on the um, uh, on the cell phone just so you could see it. Here's the choke right here. There's typically three settings, but uh, I'm not using that today just because it's so warm. Oh, little guy. There we go. All right, we'll switch over to the GoPro. Welcome to the 1979 Honda Civic CVCC and another episode of Double B's Garage. Um, today, this is gonna be a pretty quick video. The reason why I'm doing this video, and I haven't really shown much of this car, um, is because I knew I was always gonna sell it, and it really did not need a lot of work. It needed a carburetor rebuild. Um, I mean, really, that was it. I mean, I did a fuel, um, uh, a fuel filter in the back. There's actually a fuel filter underneath the seat. But the carburetor worked really well. The car would start up really, really well. Um, it would drive really well. But then when you get up to about 45 or 50 miles an hour, it would just start to peter out. It wouldn't have any more gas. Uh, it would starve and it would start to kind of cough and then you'd slow back down and then it would pick back up. And I'm not a big carburetor guy, but what the carburetor place told me was is that basically the secondary unit, um, the secondary pump or auxiliary pump or whatever uh, was bad. So it wasn't allowing the car to get enough fuel when it would come up to a stop. It would also stall when you'd come to a um, stop sign. So I wanted to fix that as well. And there was a little seepage around one of the valves that handles uh, idling and that sort of thing. So um, that's been all rectified. I wanted to take the car for a little drive to do a drive video um, for any prospective buyer. This car is actually gonna be on bring a trailer um, with no reserve. So <laughs> the last bid is gonna win it. Um, the cool thing about this car is, is this car sold brand new um, in my area and in 1979 and it's been kind of here ever since it was with an older family for a while and then they just kind of towed it behind their motorhome and really didn't drive it a whole lot so the car's only gone 32,000 miles since 1979 and it's all been documented with maintenance um, smog certificates registrations and other things on the car so the car runs really really well i mean after i got the carburetor fixed i could get up to 75 80 miles an hour and just cruise down the road it's got this continue variable transmission so you really don't feel the gear shifting it's just kind of always at rpm if that's a good term to use but uh, the car runs really really well it actually has air conditioning too which is pretty rare for these cars um, but otherwise everything is original you'll see when i do the walk around video later the interior is in immaculate condition. Uh, the pictures that'll be on Bringer Trail are also turned out really well. Um, the AC compressor does turn on, but it doesn't really blow that cold air, but it does, the clutch does work. So I think it just needs maybe a recharge, um, just because obviously the car has been sitting, clearly it's not being driven a whole lot. So typically when somebody would drive the car, um, it was like fair weather, you know, roll down the windows, enjoy the day. But the clutch works fine, the air, air conditioning seems to work fine as well. And uh, so that's good, that's a good thing. Um, but otherwise the car is, is, is really fantastic. For 1979, this is a 1.5 liter. Um, it got, I think, like 44 miles to the gallon. And these cars don't even need uh, or require a catalytic converter, which is pretty crazy. I mean, you think about California where I'm located and how harsh they are on um, emissions and, and you know the pollutants in the air this car in 1979 um, in the height of emissions when it was uh, I think 1973 1975 is when they really really came out and were real sticklers on emissions and the emission con controls got really uh, stringent in California every car had to have a catalytic converter and this car came from Japan and did not need a catalytic converter it ran so clean with the 1.5 liter 
that it didn't even require a catalytic converter to meet the emission codes um, in California, or really all 50 states for that matter, but California was the hardest. So this passes smog uh, with a sniff test with no uh, catalytic converter. How many cars you could say do that today? Um, but uh, it runs really well. I mean, you know, unlike a lot of my other cars, I'm not gonna be going terribly fast in this one, but I mean, it tracks really nice. It's super comfortable to drive. Uh, I think the rims are 13 inch wheels, so they're really tiny. The tires are maybe 10 years old, so they're, they're showing signs of cracking. Um, but because of the warm, mild climate here, you know, meaning we're not getting snow and really extreme cold temperatures, um, and because the car's been garaged mainly its whole life, uh, <clears throat> there's not really a problem with um, dry rod and those sorts of things because there hasn't been a lot of direct sun exposure to the tires um, The paint was a little faded when I bought it What I ended up doing was taking it to a friend of mine who does paint correction and they Used discs. This is a single stage paint. So with most cars you, you have uh, Base coat clear coat, which is any new car today probably from like early 90s onward and what that means is that they spray the base color which is the actual color of the car and then they spray a clear coat over the car to protect that paint and when you buff or wax the vehicle what you would get is you would get no color on your pad because you would just be buffing and polishing the clear coat well with a single stage paint basically the clear and the base are all one component right so the paint is sprayed all in one color at one time and when you buff or wax the car whatever color the car is you would actually get that color on your pad so when they did this car um, they had a lot of brown pads <laughs> because the paint was super old and it just needed some help nobody really <clears throat> spent a lot of time to make sure the paint was healthy um, so with that being said everything has been done I even had it ceramic coated after um, any single stage paint once the car is polished I like to ceramic coat them because it kind of offers what would what a clear coat would offer um, in those situations when the car would be um, would be protected. So, and it gives it a nice, maybe a nicer little brightness of a shine than you would normally have on cars without the clear coat. So, I'm gonna take this guy off and I'm gonna show you a little video when we're driving here. I'm gonna pull over just for a second. All right, so the fasten seatbelt sign's on right now. There's like a little wire that goes in this guy that is throwing the fasten seatbelt light. Obviously there's not an airbag or anything like that, but you can see um, there's the gas a little low, but there's the coolant level. Um, it's got 32,329 miles on it. Um, little ashtray up here. Everything is in really, really good shape, obviously without you know having any sun exposure, uh, this thing is, is really doing well. So here is the AC unit. You'll hear the fan turn on. Yep, see the idle adjust. There's the temp max. There's the fan all the way. These four guys right here are blasting like crazy. Um, and then you can see the idle go back up. Rear defrost, cigarette lighter. This is just like a little glove box where you can keep paperwork. All the different fans here. You can go room, defrost, low, high, fresh air, or you can recirculate. It looks like this thing's never been sat in. It's crazy how good a shape this is in, but. So, cute little horn. There's the shifter, let's get out of here. So I will try to address the airbag, or not the airbag, the fastened seatbelt light too, um, before the car goes up for sale, just to make sure that uh, I update anybody on why it's doing that. Um, could be something very simple, I just don't know. You know, these cars are so old, it might just be the latch. Uh, in the seatbelt itself, not recognizing that the seatbelt is in the latch just because, you know, I don't know, it's old, but, or it just could be like a bed. All right, so I need to apologize. I got home from the ride and, and on the last video, I don't, it'll depend on how I edit it, but I was talking about the car driving home and all of a sudden the video shut off and wasn't recording, but I didn't know that until I got home and filmed the entire video of walking around the car and showing you the car. So um, I parked the car, went inside, tried to download the video and realized it wasn't there. So here we are. Um, I'm back in the car. Uh, I started it up. And what I wanna do is just kinda walk around the car and show you um, all the things on the vehicle. 
um, that I talked about last time, which obviously uh, you didn't get to hear. So let's give it a shot. Right under here is the hood release. We're gonna undouse that. And then uh, you can see the e-brake lights on for the e-brake. Um, we talked about the interior of the car already. Um, the fact that it looks like it's never been sat in. And then uh, let's go out and take a look at the motor. <sighs> Gotta go on this side because um, this is where the hood latch is. So let's latch the hood here. All right. So here's the motor. Um, 1.5 liter. You can see the new carburetor underneath there. I mean, it's hard to see, but um, this is your 1.5 liter uh, battery. This right here is actually a bag. That bag is for your windshield washer fluid. Um, ironically, it's pretty funny. Um, but let me just look in here. Yep, windshield washer fluid. Let's see how good a shape everything is in. Um, here's your chassis number, um, Honda tag made in Japan. There's your AC condenser. You can see the clutch right now is not on. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn the clutch on like I did before so you can see that. There you go, clutch turned on when I made the temperature lower. You can see it adjusts the idle. And then now you can see the clutch is spinning. So the AC compressor works fine. Um, I just think it needs a refill as I discussed earlier. I mean the car just as you can tell has never been driven Turn that guy off. There we go. And then uh, Door panels It's got all your tire pressure load limit And then these windows actually pop out which are really cool. You don't see these on a lot of cars anymore um, And then here This is the seat folds down you can see in there, ashtray in the back for all your smoking friends. And then right here is the spare tire. Um, this is, you can jack and all the tools are down here. Um, this is the original spare tire wheel, but there's no tire. I mean, I'm guessing just because of age, it probably got to the point where it was um, rotting and they just took it off, but they left the tire in here or the, the rim in here. And then here's your uh, thing for the jack to move the jack up, but all the plastic's in really good shape. Here's your windows your little pop-out windows and then insulation i'll put this back um little snaps here and then if i can reach this guy all right so then here's this and then oh the door wasn't shut it's probably why the wind was coming in last time i was riding it but 13 inch wheels um you can see this is probably the worst one of all of them. There's a little bit of just kind of corrosion sitting on these just from sitting. Um, oh my gosh, just a 12 inch wheel. That's crazy. Um, but these tires, let me see if I can see when they were made. I can't tell when these tires were made, but yeah, I don't see the date code on these, but they're definitely showing some signs of age. So, I mean, if you're gonna be driving the car regularly, I would, um, I'd get these guys replaced, the rubber. Um, the other thing I talked about too uh, in the last video that got deleted was upon doing the paint correction of the car, we were able to find out that this front fender has been repainted um, at some point in its life. We think late 80s-ish, um, but it's a little shinier than everything else. So we assume that this has probably been repainted. There's no damage anywhere. It was probably something super simple. But back in the day, you know, when this car got a dent or a scratch or whatever, um, you just repaint it you figure it out these cars are typically used you know for hundreds of thousands of miles uh, unlike this one it's a little different but uh, you can see the windshield almost looks brand new even though it's original and then um let's take a look around here here's the other there's one of the rear wheels there let me see if i can find a date code on this guy i don't think so you can see inside there i mean well it's brand new all the chrome looks good that rim looks really nice too. You can see in there, it looks good. All on the running boards. And then there's the other front wheel there. Um, again, this thing looks like new inside. So um, I wanted to give you a little tour of the vehicle. Um, I am gonna bring it in the garage and I'll put it up on the lift and show pictures from under, underneath just so everybody can see how clean it is. 
um, with 32,000 miles a car just really hasn't been out in public's eye much it's funny people slow down and take pictures of this, of this thing when it's going down the road just because it's so unique you just don't see a lot of them but um, I really appreciate you tuning in and looking at the car um, I'll put photos up for the add on bring a trailer and uh, thanks for taking a little time out of your day to watch this video and uh, pass it along take care bye